Hello, I'm Bob Wilhelm. I'm an iconographer, that is, I paint pictures, and a hagiographer, that is, I tell stories, the sacred pictures, sacred stories. Let me tell you about this particular icon and how it came to be. It's the icon of two saints from Spain, from medieval times. Saint Mary, Santa Maria de la Cabeza, and Saint Isidore, San Isidro Labrador. Saint Isidore, the laborer or the, or the farmer, and Saint Mary, the water carrier, the one who carries the gourd. I was asked to tell the story at a convention, a festival, sponsored by the Hispanic Office of the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. And this was one of the stories that I knew I wanted to tell. Um, but I also wanted to go more deeply into the story. And even though I told the story before, I wanted to explore the story and decided to do the icon, to write an icon, as it's technically called, rather than paint an icon. And so this icon comes from that. And it was a question of how I was going to create this particular icon for my audience. The traditional icons of San Isidro generally show him at a plow with an ox. But I wanted to connect the story with the story of his wife, Santa Maria, uh, who plays a very important part in the story that he tells of himself or is told about him. And um, so I had to reimagine the iconography of this um, story. It's not from the Eastern churches, so it has no models in traditional Orthodox icons. But at the same time, it's only portrayed in Western churches in terms of folk art, especially in the Hispanic Southwest, where it very frequently is a not a a a santos, a picture, but a bultos, a, uh, a, a, a carved statue usually of Isidro at the um, plow with the ox and with an angel. So this was what I was working with and I finally decided that I would bring the unifying image of the angel who was so central to the entire story to um, envelop the married couple, Isidro and Maria. And uh, the wings of the angel on both sides suggested a heart to me, the heart of love. And uh, his outstretched wings and hands embrace them. Well, they are busy with the work of their life. She is a water carrier who provides water for the uh, thirsty laborers who work in the fields of a great hacienda under a, uh, in the story, under a uh, very strict and uh, ungenerous uh, landlord. Um, and he is simply a laborer. Uh, and in the story, he plows a field and a very miraculous thing happens. Now, I'm not going to tell you what that story is because you can just click on the link and there is the story along with the scriptural images that inspired my telling of the story. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the, uh, the iconography of this, this piece. And uh, what I did was I, it's done in acrylic and it's done on canvas board and then it is framed. And I chose some folk motifs from uh, Mexican art uh, and use them on, on the frame. Uh, the hearts, of course, are a symbol of divine love and the love of this couple. Uh, the birds are heavenly up above. And below there is uh, a, a change from the blue of the skies to the brown of the earth, uh, gradually through the lighter green, the darker green. And then not quite a a, um, an image of 
growing things, but suggestive of the shape of growing things, but more clearly a serpent. Uh, this was the last decision I made in doing this icon because it suddenly spoke to me in terms of Adam and Eve, that here were people who worked in the garden and not the garden of paradise because we've all been expelled from that garden, but the garden of our own lives and their charity and their loving work for each other and for the poor people of their community and the many stories around that all are symbolized here. And so there is a Cedro holding the spade, cultivating the ground, and she is pouring the water of life uh, out of this uh, gourd uh, that she is holding. And um, the painting then is done in a Western style, not an Eastern style, not an Orthodox Byzantine uh, style, but closer to the uh, the work of the Santeros in New Mexico, who um, would use a, um, a simpler and folksier kind of um, iconography. And um, so I told the story. I told the story at the uh, celebration. And uh, uh, this icon was a great help to me in the weeks that I spent on it imagining it and then um, then writing it, drawing it. Uh, it was a meditation, which is what I find icons to be. They emerge from the white uh, undercoating that begins on the canvas or on the wooden board to the outline, to the background colors, all the way to the very, very last um, picturing. And I'm going to show you a picture, and I'll just point to it. It's a picture that is in the background. That's one I'm working on. And it's the story of uh, uh, the Empress Irene, or Priscilla, in the Byzantine Empire. And um, I'll tell you about that icon when I finish with it. But you can see the last element of the icon is the unfinished part. And there it is, the face. Uh, only the background color is there. The details of the face are not there. And that's the way icons work. You let the picture emerge towards you. You encounter it. You prayerfully speak with the character and the story that the character represents. And the character becomes more and more present to you as the details of that character become vis visible. And the most human thing always are the hands and the face. So when we see hands and face in particular, we have a sense of being in the presence of a, another person. And our theology as Christians is that we affirm the existence of three persons and one God. And what person is is really part of our own mystical theology and a very, very important part of icons. Because in icons, it is the persons who are present to us in our prayer. And I love Maria and Isidro. They're quite wonderful. Uh, again, I'm Bob Wilhelm. Uh, and I'm an iconographer. I'm also a hagiographer, a storyteller. So listen to the story. My story of these two wonderful people. 